So here we are, NHL 24 is finally here, and this is the perfect way to start it off. We're starting it off with NHL Imperialism. And if you're not too sure how NHL Imperialism works, well, you're gonna learn on the fly. We're gonna spin this wheel of NHL teams, and we're starting with the Detroit Red Wings. That's actually the perfect team to start with. The next thing we're gonna do is spin a directional arrow to find out which direction we're going, and it looks like we're gonna be heading west. In this instance, though, heading west isn't really gonna do too much, as Detroit's just gonna be claiming a free state. However, we don't wanna waste our time watching teams just claim free states, so every team has to get into a matchup. They're heading west again, and you already know they're going to be taking on the Minnesota Wild. However, currently there is one issue. I have to wait a minute and 20 seconds. So while we wait, you may not know, but I'm trying to pass every single NHL team and YouTube subscribers, and the next team up just happens to be the Detroit Red Wings. They've got a bit of a lead on us, but I know that we can pass them. And as a community, we can't allow the Detroit Red Wings to have more subscribers than us. Something about that just doesn't sit right. So it looks like in our first matchup in today's NHL Imperialism, we're going to be heading to overtime in a 1-1 tie here. And it's not going to take long in overtime for us to find our winner. Some nice passing from the Detroit Red Wings is going to find Andrew Kopp. He's ripping one right past the goaltender into Detroit's taking game one. And with that win for the Detroit Red Wings, they're going to be the first team picking up some extra land in NHL Imperialism. But you know what? I think they deserve a reward for winning that game. So Detroit, congrats on that massive win here. And Kirill Kaprizov, welcome to the Detroit Red Wings. For every win teams getting today, they're going to be stealing a player from their opponent. So I think we all know what's going on now. So let's go ahead and have our second spin. And now we have the Ottawa Senators. And more than likely, Ottawa's going to end up in a matchup here. And it looks like they're going to be taking their talents northeast. And based on where the logo is for Ottawa, I'm going to say northeast is taking on the Montreal Canadiens. I think that's pretty straightforward. And after all the moves this team made during the offseason, the Ottawa Senators are going to be upset in the first round by the Montreal Canadiens. Not going to lie, Ottawa, that's a tough look for you guys. You made all those moves only to fall to Montreal. You hate to see it, you really do. After taking Tim Stutzel away from the Ottawa Senators, Montreal now has a new highest overall player, and that's going to be him at an 89 overall. But real talk, Ottawa, you did all that work during the offseason, hyped your team up, and you lost to the Montreal Canadiens. That's tough. That's real tough. But there's no point worrying about that Ottawa Senators team because they're already eliminated, and now we have to move on to our next matchup, and that's going to feature the Buffalo Sabres. And it's pretty difficult for Buffalo to knock into a matchup here because they're surrounded by NHL teams, but it looks like they're heading due south. Due south, but also slightly west. The slightly west is very important here because by heading south it's either the philadelphia flyers or the pittsburgh penguins but it was slightly west so that means it's going to be the pittsburgh penguins and we finally have our first big blowout of the video the buffalo sabers are going to absolutely dominate the pittsburgh penguins six to two and after all those moves pittsburgh made bringing in that great defenseman eric carlson 6-2. to two. We'll just leave it at that. So although the Buffalo Sabres have a bunch of great centers on their team, why not add another one? 93 overall Sid the Kid. I probably should stop calling him Sid the Kid. He is 36 years old. Sidney Crosby, welcome to the Buffalo Sabres. Not gonna lie, I kind of find it ironic that two of the three teams to follow so far made a bunch of moves during the offseason, only to get upset by teams. I guess Buffalo beating Pittsburgh wasn't that much of an upset, but you get what I mean. Buffalo beating Pittsburgh definitely wasn't an upset. If anything, Buffalo was definitely the favorite heading into that matchup. But now we got a poverty franchise and the Arizona Coyotes. I just have to get comments like that out of my system. I'm so used to this team sucking for so long, they're going to be heading northwest. And I don't know how long we're going to be seeing our Arizona Coyotes team staying here because northwest is going to lead to the Vegas Golden Knights. They just won a Stanley Cup. That team's looking fantastic. Arizona's going to have their hands full. So Arizona, I gotta say, you impressed me here. Taking out the Vegas Golden Knights 4-2, the Stanley Cup champions, you're making a statement here. You'll love to see it. The Vegas Golden Knights might have lost, but Jack Eichel, he's going to keep on surviving, and now he's joined the Arizona Coyotes. Real talk, I'm actually excited for the future of the Arizona Coyotes. That team's gone through so much over the handful of years, just poor drafting and poor decisions, but you got Clayton Keller, you got Nick Schmaltz, Logan Cooley, you're building a good foundational core there. Only for that foundational core to eventually somehow get screwed up by poor management, but we're not going to worry about that. The Anaheim Ducks are up next. A team that's also making very weird decisions right now. I know Trevor Zegers got paid the other day, but why did it take you this long? No, like seriously, you gave Racco Gudis $4 million, but you told Trevor Zegers he was only worth three. That's one of the most disrespectful things I've ever heard. Also, the Anaheim Ducks are heading east, so Arizona's gonna be in another matchup here. Okay, this is gonna be the first game that we don't jump into. Arizona's been absolutely smoking the Anaheim Ducks. It's six nothing. Like normally I would jump into the blowouts, but this is six nothing. It's not even close. So I am gonna go with Trevor Zegers here over Troy Terry, and the only reason for that is Zegers' secondary positions left wing and I feel like this Arizona team definitely has enough right wingers like at least when Pittsburgh lost 6-2 they picked up two goals 
Anaheim, y'all did nothing. Moving right on over to our next matchup, it looks like we're going to be sticking in the Western Conference, and we got the LA Kings. So there is a possibility that Arizona gets into another matchup here, but it doesn't look like it as LA is heading north. And what does north mean for this LA Kings team? Well, that means they're going to be taking on the San Jose Sharks, and honestly, this probably should be a guarantee win for them. So it looks like my prediction is going to be right, and the LA Kings are going to be taking down the San Jose Sharks, but it's actually not that dominant of a game. Okay, why'd you guys have to pick up a penalty here? It's 6 4, the game's over. I'm not waiting for the next five seconds. We're going to call the game here. Unfortunately, since Eric Carlson's no longer on the San Jose Sharks, LA is not going to be able to steal him away, but they are going to get Tomas Hurdle, and I would say that's a pretty good upgrade for this team. Being completely honest, I'm incredibly surprised that LA didn't win that game 7-0, because who does San Jose really have left? They've lost so many players over the past few years. That team's entering the rebuild and it's going to be a long rebuild. But to be completely honest, San Jose needs a rebuild. They have so many old players on that team that just aren't good enough anymore. Edmonton Oilers, they've got a lot of good players, and that team's not necessarily that old. It's going to be pretty difficult for Edmonton to avoid any type of matchup here. They're going to be heading directly west, and I already know they're going to be taking on the Vancouver Canucks. And just to prove it's the Vancouver Canucks, there you go. Edmonton's taking on the Canucks. So we're entering the final seconds of this game, and it doesn't look like Vancouver's going to be able to score in the offensive zone, but they are going to be picking up a power play with 1.2 seconds left in the third period. That's going to carry into overtime. We got ourselves a game here. Also, Nuge, what are you doing, my guy? One second left in the period. Just play smart hockey. And right off the face off, 30 seconds into overtime, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know what happened here. I don't know why Stuart Skinner didn't just cover the puck up. Something stupid happened here, but it doesn't matter. Edmonton's losing and Vancouver surviving another day. I'm going to be honest. I really didn't process what just happened. The Vancouver Canucks beat the Edmonton Oilers. So you know what that means? Connor McDavid, welcome to the Vancouver Canucks. For some reason, I didn't even comprehend this after Vancouver won. So far, I would say NHL 24 Imperialism is off to a fantastic start. We've had a ton of upsets. A lot of the games have been somewhat close. We've had two overtime games so far. Couldn't ask for much more. I think it's about time we head back over to the Eastern Conference because we've been in the West for a long time. And that's exactly where we're headed. We got the Columbus Blue Jackets next. So Columbus, your team's 100% healthy. I'm excited to see what you're going to do this season. And right now you're going to be heading south. However, in this instance, south is just going to lead to a free state for them. So we're going to have to spin again. So with arrow spin number two, what direction are you going to be heading this time? South once again. But this time, you're definitely in a matchup. And what matchup is that going to be? Well, you're going to have to take on the Nashville Predators. In the final seconds of this game, Columbus is doing everything they can to get a last-second push going. But Nashville, they're just playing fantastic defense, not allowing them into the zone. And Nashville's taking this game 4-3. to three. The decision on who to bring to the Nashville Predators was pretty easy for me. Johnny Hockey, welcome to the team. So let's just move on to our next matchup. After that disappointing one for the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Winnipeg Jets are going to be on the attack next. Like, real talk, Columbus, I hyped you up, and then you lost in your first matchup. It's not a good luck for me. It's also not a good luck for you. And Winnipeg, you're heading east. Through heading east, you're entering some occupied land that was taken from the Ottawa Senators, and now that belongs to Montreal, so that's who you're taking on. So boys, I just got to witness a Connor Halbuck masterclass. He's picking up the shutout. Mason Appleton, he's going to pick up the empty netter here. We're going to see the cutscene celebration, and now we're off to our next matchup because I don't need to sit here for the next 10 seconds. This game's over. Now, although he's not technically a member of the Montreal Canadiens, he was taken from Ottawa, went over to Montreal, and now now he's coming to Winnipeg. Welcome Tim Stutzel. Now this might be a hot take, but that cutscene I just watched after Mason Appleton scoring the goal, not the end of the world. I saw people losing their minds about NHL adding that in. It's not that big of a deal. I don't know why people were going crazy about it. Yes, I do think they could have used their resources in a more productive manner instead of working on that, but we're acting like it's the end of the world. Also, we got the greatest franchise of all time, the St. Louis Blues. This team's going to be destroying whoever they have to take on. And for some reason, I already have a feeling I know who we're going to take on. It's going to be the Chicago Blackhawks. Never mind, we're heading south. It's not going to be Chicago. Well, there's still a possibility it could be Chicago because we're just claiming a free state here, so we're going to have to spin again. So let's spin this wheel again, get another direction. Where are we going to be heading this time? south once again and similar to our last spin directly south is just going to be another free state now you could say we should take on the dallas stars but i think that's southwest and we went directly south people in the comments are now going to be acting like oh you rigged it for the st louis blues you rigged it no i didn't i have more important things to do than rigging nhl 24 imperialism and one of those things is watching our next matchup the st louis blues taking on the nashville predators yeah so who was i ripping on earlier in the video about losing six nothing in a game can't remember that team but you know what i can relate it's not necessarily 6-0, but 5-0? 
Yikes. It was Anaheim. The other team was Anaheim. We're on the same level as the Anaheim Ducks. So who are we going to be adding from the St. Louis Blues? No surprise here, Robert Thomas. 87 overall, elite potential. He's got a couple X factors. Yes, I could have gone with Busnevich and I could have gone with Jordan Cairo, but nah. We're going to drop one overall just so this team can bring Robert Thomas onto the team. He's a game changer. So we're just going to pretend that this matchup didn't happen and then quickly move on to our next one. We're just going to pretend this didn't happen. Moving on to our next matchup, it looks like the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be on the attack next. It's good to see some more Eastern Conference teams getting in on the mix, and it looks like Carolina's going to be heading directly north. But in this situation, directly north is just going to be a free state for Carolina. Our second spirit for the Carolina Hurricanes is going to be sending them southwest. And once again for the Carolina Hurricanes, another free state. We're moving on to spin number three here. It's basically impossible for this team not to get into a matchup. Okay, this is the third spin in a row where they've gone directly east. Directly east just leads into the ocean. Okay, stop sending me east. If you keep giving me east, I'm just going to take west. We're going directly north, and I know that's a matchup for a fact. Like seriously, if this team heads east, they just go this way. They head slightly northeast, they go this way. Southeast, they go here. All they have to do is either go west or go north or go like slightly southwest. But no, they're going north. That's leading to Washington Capitals territory, and that's who they're taking on. So Carolina was trying to make a last second push here. Bro rung it off the post. Ain't no way you hit the post in that situation. Washington, you better bury this in the back of the net somehow. Like, if you don't score here, okay, good, they're scoring. Washington's taking this one 2 nothing. The fact that you rung the post from that far out, no, nah, that ain't it. So with that win over the Carolina Hurricanes, Washington's going to be adding the man that just got a bag, Sebastian Ajo. Congrats on securing the bread. Our next match is going to be featuring another Eastern Conference team, and that's going to be the New York Islanders. And with a quick spin of the directional arrow, we're going to find out that the New York Islanders are going to be heading south. And for the Islanders, heading south is going to mean they're going to have to take on the New Jersey Devils. We're down to the final 10 seconds of this game. The Islanders have the goalie pulled. They got to cook something up here. And what are they cooking up? Well, they're going to pass the puck into the neutral zone, then Pollock's going to skate all the way back to the defensive zone. What is this team doing here? Love the AI's logic right there. You know what? We got to push. Got to get the offense going. So let me skate back to the defensive zone. Sorokin's going to be the first goalie changing teams today as we're going to see him go from the New York Islanders over to the New Jersey Devils because I feel like he would be the biggest upgrade for this team. Now that they have an elite goaltender in between the pipes, it might be wraps for the rest of the league. Moving right on over to our next matchup, it looks like we're staying in the Eastern Conference and we actually have a team that was just in another matchup, the Washington Capitals. However, things are a bit different this time around as now they're going to be on the attack and they're going to be heading north east but mainly north and that direction is going to lead them into a matchup with the philadelphia flyers so now it's time for them to get in the mix so in the final seconds of this game washington is doing everything they can to get back to this one but they're not going to be able to and philly's going to be taking them down five to three also i completely forgot max patch on the washington capitals now just going to be completely honest i forgot he changed teams so i got to give my props to the philadelphia flyers i did not think they were going to be winning a matchup in today's video but here they are they're taking down the washington capitals and now they got alexander ovechkin on the team so we still have a handful of teams left here and we still haven't even got through the first round yet but we're sticking in the eastern conference the boston bruins the team that won 65 games last season they're on the attack next i really hope that 65 games is the correct number of games they won because i actually couldn't tell you they're heading west though and through heading west from boston bruins territory they're going to enter some devils territory so we got ourselves a matchup so after breaking the win record last season looking absolutely fantastic the bruins lost a lot of key pieces over the off season and what's that going to result in a 3-0 loss. Didn't even pick up a goal here. So with the Devils winning all these massive matchups, they keep adding key pieces to their team, and now they have 95 overall David Pasternak. With the win over the Islanders and Boston Bruins, they've added two major pieces. So our next matchup is going to feature a team that we literally just saw in a matchup or two ago, the Philadelphia Flyers. Like real talk, how are we seeing the same teams over and over again when there's a ton of teams that we haven't seen yet? Like what do we have right now? The Philadelphia Flyers taking on the New Jersey Devils, two teams that have been in a ton of matchups lately. So at one point, this matchup Philadelphia had a 2-0 series so at one point in this game Philly had a 2-0 lead but New Jersey's gonna take it did bro almost put that in his own net he rung it off the post when he was trying to wrap around the net brah ain't no way so if you thought the offense wasn't good enough on the New Jersey Devils let's add Alexander Ovechkin to the team Ovi and Pasta and you got Jack Hughes at center this team's developing something here so even with all the matchups the Devils have been in so far they're still on the wheel because I don't think they've attacked anyone yet. They've been attacked three times, but I'm not sure if they've done the attacking yet. Well, they definitely haven't attacked yet because they're still on the wheel here. But now we're going to head back over to the Western Conference. We're in the Pacific Division and we got the Seattle Kraken. I'm happy we're finally out of the Eastern Conference. We had a ton of matchups over there and now we're heading East. It's kind of ironic. East isn't going to mean too much for the Seattle Kraken though, as they're just going to be claiming a free state. 
Moving on to spin number two for the Seattle Kraken, it looks like they're going to be heading east once again. Nah, this is getting ridiculous at this point. So we were stuck in the Eastern Conference for a long time, and now we're in the Western Conference, but you know what? Let's just keep heading east, because why wouldn't we? Now, if we head east here once again, then there's something wrong with the wheel. It's sending us west, but the only issue with that is we would end up in the ocean. So we gotta spin the wheel again. It's giving me west once again. Give me north or south. Let's just keep it simple. You know what? We're going to count this as south. But ironically, that actually doesn't change anything because that's just going to allow them to claim another free state. So head either north or head south because you're either taking on the LA Kings or the Vancouver Canucks. It's one or the other. I guess southeast would give them Arizona, but you know what? Who cares? Stop giving me west. North, south, or southeast? This is south. They're taking on the LA Kings. Honestly, this was getting a bit ridiculous, but now that I'm looking at this, because it was south, but also slightly east, I think that might be Arizona Coyotes territory, because this would be directly south. Southeast is like that. You know what? They're not taking on the LA Kings. It's going to be Seattle versus the Arizona Coyotes. I'm sorry, but there's no way that in the past two matchups for the Arizona Coyotes, they've outscored their opponents 11-0. That's back-to-back -back shutouts, I believe, because they shout the Anaheim Ducks, and now they shout the Seattle Kraken. 11 nothing in the past two games for this team we got to stop sleeping on them although arizona's looking really good right now their defense definitely could use a bit of work so vince dunn welcome to the team 87 overall st louis legend i really wish you were manning our defense right now we could use the help finally we're gonna get a chance at seeing bedard here the chicago blackhawks are in the attack next this team's just incredibly lucky that the st louis blues have already been eliminated so they don't have to worry about taking them on they dodged one right there now this is a tough one to judge because Southeast would technically be Nashville territory, but the real question is, do they cut through this empty state right here? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say they go directly into Nashville territory, so we got the Chicago Blackhawks taking on the Nashville Predators. This open state's gonna stay up for grabs for a little bit here. So we've reached the final five seconds of this matchup. The Chicago Blackhawks, they were unable to take the win here, but let's be completely honest, the Chicago Blackhawks team is not that good. They don't have a goaltender, the defense is very mid, the bottom six is mid. I'm sorry to break your heart, Chicago Blackhawks fans, but you got Connor Bedard, but you're still a handful of years away. So before I see 9 million comments, oh, why'd you take Seth Jones over Taylor Hall and Connor Bedard? He's the highest overall at an 87. That's why I took him. But we're working with Strictly this season, so I'm taking an 87 overall over an 83 to an 85. So Vancouver, you're surrounded by teams as long as you don't go north or west. You're heading east, so I already know that's a matchup for you. And it looks like you're going to be taking on the other team in Alberta in the Calgary Flames. So this was a hard-fought battle between these two teams. Just kidding. After the second period ended, Vancouver completely took over. They're winning this one 4-1. to one, And obviously, Connor McDavid was going to be leading the way for this team. So the Calgary Flames had a bunch of great players to pick from, but you know what? I'm going to go with Elias Lindholm and 89 overall it'll help the forward core and this is just a great pickup all around so finally we're going to see this team in our upcoming matchup the Toronto Maple Leafs I've been waiting for this team they made a bunch of great moves during the offseason and I'm excited to see what they can do now let's be completely honest this team's either going on an incredibly deep run or they're going to fold like usual. I'm kind of hoping for a deep run, not going to lie. So the team's going to be heading northwest and it's pretty clear who they're going to be taking on it's the Winnipeg Jets. So Toronto what happened here boys? Six to four. I hyped you up. Why is it every team I hype up before the matchup ends up losing? You know what? We're done with hyping up teams here. Is every time we do, it backfires. No, but real talk, 6-4. to four. So Austin Matthews, you weren't able to win with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And when I say win, I don't mean a Stanley Cup, a single game. One game in NHL Imperialism is all I asked, but instead you're going to fold. So you got to join the Winnipeg Jets now. Honestly, I shouldn't even be surprised that the Leafs lost. They always find a way to disappoint. So we got the Rangers with our last spin, and now they're going to be heading east. I'm pretty sure this leads into New Jersey Devils territory. So it actually doesn't lead into Devils territory. It just leads into a free state. So I guess they're getting lucky there. But spin number two more than likely is going to be a different outcome for the Rangers. They're heading directly north. And if you're heading north, more than likely you're going to be taking on the Winnipeg Jets. Because this team owns so much territory in Canada. So Austin Matthews, he's picking up a last second goal here, and this game's now out of reach for the Rangers. They were trying to make a comeback, but now they won't be able to. It's 4 nothing with 15 seconds left. So this Winnipeg Jets team just keeps getting better and better with the additions they keep bringing to the team, and now they're bringing 93 overall or Tane Pernarin. Now if you told me at the beginning of this video that the big five this far into the video would be Winnipeg, Vancouver, Arizona, Nashville, and New Jersey, I wouldn't have believed you. But here we are. I also wouldn't have believed you at the amount of great teams that have been eliminated so far. Now the Florida Panthers are on the attack. Now we don't have to spin the directional wheel for Florida, because they have no choice, they have to take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. I guess you could make the argument they hop on a boat and go all the way to Dallas but then that just makes things really complicated so Florida you're taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning so the Tampa Bay Lightning are going to be taking this one a commanding victory seven to three 
This is the most goals we've seen from a team so far. They're destroying the Florida Panthers, and they're off to the next round. Well, I shouldn't say next round. They're surviving another day. So literally zero consideration was going into this next selection. Matthew Kachuk. It's obvious why. So we're officially down to our final five teams on our first wheel, and it looks like the New Jersey Devils are finally going to be attacking. The fact that this team's already added three players to their team, and they haven't even attacked anyone yet, makes no sense. Northwest is going to lean to a matchup of two very young teams. Of course, we have the Devils, but we're also going to have the Buffalo Sabres. So when the New Jersey Devils are in a matchup, you already know what's going to happen. They're going to have another dominant performance, and they're going to be taking down the Buffalo Sabres 5-2. Once they add Tage Thompson to this team, they might be unstoppable. That's yeah, so why I lied about Tage Thompson coming to the team. is actually going to be Sidney Crosby completely forgot I added him from the Pittsburgh Penguins. So Tage Thompson, you get to stay on the Buffalo Sabres, and Sidney Crosby, you're coming over to the New Jersey Devils. So we have three Central Division teams left and one Eastern Conference. We're going to land on the one Eastern Conference team. So I can tell you right now, we're going to have to spin this directional arrow a couple times. Because this direction right here, that's not giving us anything. That's actually just sending us into the ocean. That's also sending us into the ocean. You have to give me north. You know what? We're gonna call it opposite day, this is north. Wow, that's so crazy that the Tampa Bay Lightning got north. But you know what north is gonna be? A free state for them. Who would have saw that one coming? It's not like there is any other possible outcome. So all I need here is the arrow to point directly north. We're gonna classify this as north, but this is also northwest. We have to keep that in mind. And the reason I emphasize that as being northwest is north leads us into New Jersey Devils territory. However, if we're going northwest from the logo, I would say that's Nashville Predator territory. I mean, you also could make the argument that it's this free state right here, but you know what? We want matchups around here. Give me the Nashville Predators. So with time winding down, Nashville's putting some pressure on the Tampa Bay Lightning. We're gonna stop the clock here at 0.8 seconds, but this game's over. Nashville's taking it six to five. But you know what? We'll watch these last 0.8 seconds. It's now 0.7. What just happened? That changed. It was 0.8. It wasn't 0.7 though. I know that for a fact. So Nashville's picking up somebody from the Tampa Bay Lightning, but they're actually not from the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're from the Florida Panthers who got claimed by Tampa Bay. It's Matthew Kachuk. Let's make things complicated. Also, I'm going to be giving Nashville these two territories right here because they're the only team that can technically claim that territory. They have all the land surrounding it. Might as well give it to them. So we're down to our last three teams. All three of them are from the Central Division, and it looks like the Colorado Avalanche are going to be the next team attacking. So Colorado is definitely one of those teams I've been looking for forward to watching and now this team's going to be heading southeast but with all the free states surrounding them it's no surprise that they're going to be claiming one moving on to spin number two for the colorado avalanche it looks like they're going to be heading south now and similar to the last spin once again they're going to be claiming a free state so my prediction is here no matter what direction they go they're going to be claiming another free state now it's northwest and who would have saw this coming for the colorado avalanche Northwest is going to be another free state. Colorado's really about to claim all this land, yet they haven't actually faced somebody yet. But now they're definitely going to face somebody. They're going northwest once again. And through going northwest, they're going to cut through some of their own land, and that's going to lead to Arizona Coyote territory, and that's who they got to match up against. So with time winding down in this game, Miko Randon's going to be able to pick up the empty net goal here. Colorado's got a 3-1 lead, and someone's finally going to have an answer for the Arizona Coyotes. So with Colorado finally having an answer for Arizona's dominance, they're going to be adding a key piece to their team in Jack Eichel. And with them taking all that land from Arizona they've entered the top three most land owned and I'm also going to give them this free state right here they own all the land around it you might as well give it to them so we've got our final two spins it's either the Nashville Predators or the Dallas Stars and it looks like it's going to be the Dallas Stars now this is probably the most important directional arrow spin of the video because with this heading northwest that means they're going to take on the Colorado Avalanche if it went northeast it would have been the Nashville Predators but we got Dallas versus Colorado to look forward to so this was back and forth the entire way but Nachushkin would be able to pick up the lone goal for the Colorado Avalanche and they're going to be taking this in a 1-0 game. So if you didn't think the Colorado Avalanche had enough firepower, let's add Jason Robertson to the team. He's going to be playing alongside Jack Eichel. This team has so much offensive talent, it's ridiculous. So we already know the Nashville Predators are the last team on that wheel, so we might as well just spin the directional arrow for them. They're going to be heading west, but slightly north, but that doesn't really matter too much. They're taking on the Colorado Avalanche. Never mind, I'm taking that back. Northwest for them is actually just claiming this free state. So they're going to avoid Colorado in this matchup. So let's just go ahead and spin this wheel again. Hopefully get into a matchup this time. And we're going to be heading west once again. So I guess we are taking on the Colorado Avalanche. So here we go. Four seconds left on the clock. Devon Taves is going to get the last shot of the game more than likely. That's what it's going to be. UC Sarles is making some massive saves here. But he's going to allow Nashville to take the victory. And they're taking down the Colorado Avalanche. So we're finally finished up with round number one. And Nathan McKinnon, he's going to be the final guy added before we head into round number two. And he's going to Nashville. So 
So here's what the map's looking like, and we're officially down to our final six teams. The Vancouver Canucks, LA Kings, Winnipeg Jets, Detroit Red Wings, New Jersey Devils, and Nashville Predators. And clearly, Nashville owns the most land right now. Or maybe Winnipeg, because I mean, they got two massive provinces here. It's between Nashville and Winnipeg, but I'm pretty sure it's Nashville. But who really knows? So I've put all six teams back on the wheel, and with our first spin, we're gonna have the LA Kings taking on somebody. And honestly, I'm not really too sure who they're gonna be taking on, because I mean, there's so many options. I don't know how we're gonna figure it out. Yeah, so this game's all wrapped up. Gustav Nyquist, he's going to be picking up a late goal here. Cam Tau is not going to be able to make the save. It's 5-1 Nashville. Let's just pack her up. So I think we've already added enough forwards to the Nashville Predators. So we'll pick up Drew Doughty here to help the defense. So with that defense from the LA Kings, this is what the map's looking like. Honestly, it's just everyone versus Nashville right now. So with our next wheel spin, we're going to see the team that just played in the game, the Nashville Predators, but this time they're attacking. So where's Nashville going to be headed? I mean, they own basically all the land, but they're going to be heading east. And I think that means New Jersey Devils territory. That's exactly what it means. So that's who Nashville is going to be taking on. So we already knew when these two teams matched up against each other, it would be a close one no matter what there are two powerhouses but the new jersey devils are going to be coming out on top in a 3-1 victory and they're stealing all the land east coast to west coast they own it all so nashville might have picked up nathan mckinnon a couple matchups ago from the colorado avalanche but he's not going to be sticking with them now he's joined the new jersey devils so with that defense from the new jersey devils the entire map's turning red and new jersey owns everything honestly the next team i want to see is the detroit red wings never mind we're getting a team that we haven't seen very much in this video the New Jersey Devils. We saw Detroit in the very first matchup and haven't seen them since. We might see them here though. The only way they take on Detroit is if they head directly west, and that's exactly where they're heading. We got Detroit versus New Jersey. And honestly, I feel like it would be only fitting if the Detroit Red Wings somehow beat the New Jersey Devils, seeing as they've only won one game so far. And they also haven't been in a matchup since the very first one. So I thought there was a chance this could happen, but I didn't think it actually would. The Detroit Red Wings are going to take down the New Jersey Devils, and Detroit's taken all that land. The team that has won two games so far beat the New Jersey Devils, who have claimed like eight players. Things are getting a bit ridiculous out here. So Nathan McKinnon, I don't even know how many teams you've been on so far. I think you're on your fourth now in the Detroit Red Wings. You've been across the league, but more importantly, you're on the team that's in the final three. You've been across the league, but more importantly, you're on a team that's in the final three. Thought I'd just update you guys on the map. Here's what it's looking like now. Detroit owns a bit of land now. They gained a bit more by beating the Devils. Not too much more though. So here we go, our second last wheel spin of the video. Actually, this might be the last wheel spin. I think it is the last wheel spin. We got the Winnipeg Jets. Because after this matchup, we're going to know who the final two teams are. Winnipeg's going to be heading southeast, and that means they're taking on the Detroit Red Wings. So that means the Vancouver Canucks have secured their spot in the final, and the last spot's going to be decided between the Winnipeg Jets and Detroit Red Wings. And with that empty nair from Kirill Kaprizov, it's decided the Detroit Red Wings are going to be taking on the Vancouver Canucks for NHL 24 Imperialism, the final matchup set. So let's get right into it. And you know what? Since Detroit owns all of this land right here, they're going to be the home team. And I think it's only fitting that they're the home team. Look at Vancouver up here. They have three territories. There's Edmonton's Calgary's. Detroit, on the other hand, literally the entire map. So I think it's only fair they're the home team. Before we get into that final matchup, though, the Detroit Red Wings are going to be adding one more player to their team, and that's going to be 93 overall Austin Matthews. So we're going to go period by period for this final game. The Detroit Red Wings are picking up four goals in the first period on nine shots. Then they're going to pick up another goal in the second. They have a 5-0 lead heading into the final frame. How did this happen? So I guess we have our NHL 24 Imperialism champs, the Detroit Red Wings. It's 8-0. They're going to win this game 8-0. Ain't no way the first team we got from the wheel spin is the team winning it all and they're gonna win it eight nothing so with everything all said and done we finally have our champion for nhl 24 imperialism the detroit red wings and they dominated that final game like vancouver y'all might have to relocate after that loss eight nothing in the final that's embarrassing 